Canadians have spoken. You want a government with a vision and an agenda for this country that is positive and ambitious and hopeful. Well, my friends, I promise you tonight that I will lead that government. The year was 2015. The swearing in of the Prime Minister. Le Premier ministre signera maintenant les registres de serment. Justin Trudeau, the leader of the Liberal Party, was sworn in as the Prime Minister of Canada, ending nearly a decade of Conservative dominance. It was an election that launched a thousand selfies. The international press was smitten by Trudeau's compelling personality, and so were the citizens of Canada. With millions of social media followers, Trudeau broke the internet with his panda cuddling, sports playing and fancy dress antics. Thank you, my friends. Merci tout le monde. And then he would turn up everywhere, giving speeches and spreading his charm. The formula that made Justin Trudeau unbelievably popular. On behalf of 35 million Canadians, we're back. <laughs> Fast forward to 2023, as Trudeau is entering his eighth year in office, things don't look as promising as earlier for him and his party. A recent poll by Ipsos found that 40% of Canadians want to see opposition leader Pierre Poilivre, a Conservative, as the Prime Minister, while just 31% vote for Justin Trudeau. As per the polls, if elections were to happen now, the Conservatives would win a majority government, deposing the Trudeau-led Liberal minority government. <laughs> Meanwhile, another survey in the month of July revealed that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is considered the worst Prime Minister in over 50 years by a section of Canadian voters. This revelation creates a stark contrast to the legacy of his father, Pierre Trudeau. Pierre Trudeau, who held the position of Prime Minister from 1968 to 1979, and again from 1980 to 1984, was revered among the Canadian populace during his tenure. With charismatic leadership and a vision for a unified Canada, he won over both his constituents and critics. But for his son, Justin Trudeau, the latest polls have come as a worrying sign. Public enthusiasm in Canada has diminished. Fractures have emerged in his ways of politics. Ahead of the elections in Canada, scheduled for autumn of 2025, one question remains on everyone's mind. Is Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau losing popularity? There's no question that Trudeau is on thin ice. Uh, his polls are at a very low ebb and dropping. Yeah, there's little question, I think, that according to these polls, if there were an election tomorrow, uh, that he would be passing into history and that he would lose. Uh, Canadians uh, no longer grant him the sort of reservoir of personal credibility that he started with eight years ago, uh, the kind of credibility that might carry through him through a crisis uh, like the Canada-India crisis, uh, without producing his evidence, for example. Uh, and that's, of course, a very relevant example today. So I think he's reaching the end of his allotted span. Trudeau's near unprecedented rates of disapproval are also due to high housing and living costs, inflation and related issues in the country. What internal problems is Canada facing at the moment? Is Trudeau concerned about his people? What's being done by the Canadian government to mitigate issues? And not just that, as Trudeau goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with India in the ongoing diplomatic spat, he seems to be facing quiet isolation and a lack of support from his allies. So what is the latest India-Canada row? The past scandals and missteps involving Trudeau? And what's at stake for Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau? 
let's dig deeper. Relations between the two countries have been tepid for several years. Canada's recent allegations against the Indian government have further spoiled things. In the month of September, on the sidelines of the G20 summit in New Delhi, Justin Trudeau, who had a rather subdued trip to India, had a meeting with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. PM Modi raised his concerns to Trudeau over certain extremist elements that were engaging in anti-India activities in Canada. This was in reference to the increase in Khalistani activities in the North American country over the last few months. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau claimed he has credible information linking India to the killing of Hardeep Singh Nijjar. Right now, we are in the situation where I think the Canadian government and a lot of the Canadian media is trying to find an out for Justin Trudeau so that if they can prove that the Indian government might be involved, then we're basically pretend that we are completely innocent in the matter, when obviously none of this would have happened if we hadn't been allowing Khalistani terrorists to make uh, Canada their home base. This has obviously been the major issue, and while two wrongs don't make a who cares we should be focusing on uh, we should be focusing on making sure that canada doesn't become a hub for extremism that would invite a country to violate our sovereignty and maybe uh, you know go for killing we can, we again don't know if india actually did this but i'm just saying in the hypothetical scenario canada still has to take responsibility for what it's done Trudeau told an emergency session of the parliamentary opposition that his government is actively pursuing evidence of a link between India and the killing of Hardeep Singh Nijjar, a Canadian citizen. Right Honourable Prime Minister. Over the past number of weeks, Canadian security agencies have been actively pursuing credible allegations of a potential link between agents of the government of India and the killing of a Canadian citizen, Hardeep Singh Nijjar. Meanwhile, India has vehemently denied any involvement in Nijjar's killing and called the allegations absurd and motivated, triggering a huge diplomatic row between the two countries. We have been sharing details of, uh, you know, fugitives from justice who have run away, who are seeking safe havens in Canada and elsewhere, to come back to India and face um, injustice and, you know, justice, whether it's economic fugitives or it's terrorists. I think that's the way, uh, you know, rule of law works. I, I'm a, I, I don't even know what else to tell you how to handle. Easier would be if the host governments, where they're seeking safe havens, take action against such. Uh, Hardeep Singh Nijjar was the head of the Guru Nanak Sikh Gurdwara Sahib in Surrey, Canada, and the chief of the separatist organization called Khalistan Tiger Force, or KTF. Nijjar was known for his advocacy of the creation of an independent Sikh nation, Khalistan, that would include parts of India's Punjab state, and India had declared him a wanted terrorist. In February 2023, India's Ministry of Home Affairs notified KTF as a terrorist organization under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. India's National Investigation Agency, or NIA, had also declared a cash reward of 10 lakh rupees, or more than 16,000 Canadian dollars, for Nijjar. On the 18th of June this year, Nijjar was killed after being shot by unidentified assailants on the premises of a Gurdwara in Canada. The diplomatic row over the killing of the Khalistani separatist leader Nijjar is now snowballing into a major confrontation between the two countries involved. Canada expelled a top Indian diplomat as it investigates what its Prime Minister Justin Trudeau called credible allegations that India may have had links with the killing of Nijjar. India, in retaliation, ordered a senior Canadian diplomat to leave the country within five days. The expulsions came as relations between Canada and India hit a new low. Trade talks have been derailed. Canada recently cancelled a trade mission to India that was planned later this year.
On the 24th of September, Canada updated its travel advisory for its citizens in India, asking them to remain vigilant and exercise caution. The Canadian government's move comes after New Delhi issued a similar advisory for Indian nationals and students living in Canada and halted visa services last week. India advised its citizens living in Canada and those contemplating travelling there to exercise utmost caution in view of growing anti-India activities in the North American country. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's allegations against India haven't found many takers on the global stage. Trudeau, who alleged India's involvement in the killing of Hardeep Singh Nijjar, now finds himself isolated. Even his trusted allies have refused to speak out against India. However, some members of the Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance have called for cooperation in the investigation. India's position from day one has been to cooperate, subject to specific evidence provided. So, what is the Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance? The Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance was founded in 1941. It refers to an international intelligence-sharing partnership between five nations – the US, UK, Canada, Australia and New Zealand. These partner nations exchange a wide spectrum of intelligence within one of the world's most tightly knit multilateral agreements as part of the collaboration. That's why I don't think the Five Eyes intelligence agencies are going to even allow Justin Trudeau to leak the evidence because I think they don't trust him that, uh, one, maybe they also just don't think that there's enough there with the evidence to actually prove anything and you don't release the information if you can't prove anything. But other Five Eyes nations probably also don't want Justin Trudeau to have access to information simply because every time he gets a little bit of information, he will immediately use it against someone. I think that with the international community right now, what's best to do is that if you're going to deal with Canada, make it very short and don't interact personally with Justin Trudeau as much as you can pro possibly avoid. Because Justin Trudeau seems to be out to prove that he's the most progressive and tolerant leader out there in the world. The West has made heavy diplomatic investments in India in the last few years. The latest is the Game Changer India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor, or IMEC, with participation by the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Israel, and Europe. India is being courted by the United States and others as a counterweight against China and a good alternative to Chinese supply chains. This means Canada, with a population of just 40 million people, is severely outgunned diplomatically. Also, India has strengthened its economic ties with the UK, with which it is negotiating a free trade deal. France, which is a significant military supplier for India, Australia and Japan are close allies too. Can this case ruin India's position on the global stage, where it has been emerging as an important leader lately? Is India more important to the West? Principally, we're talking about the United States, which has taken the position that we must keep India within the family of Western democracies or closely related, that we must keep India close uh, as a counterweight to the rise of China. Everybody understands this, everybody understands that that must be the strategic imperative. That's certainly something that Mr. Biden understands. Biden wants not just to keep India happy, but also to keep India happy within the Western embrace. Justin Trudeau's disapproval among the Canadian population is a cold reality for Trudeau, who started in the Prime Minister's office with a sweeping mandate. The Liberal government has had its share, maybe more than its share, of scandals and controversies under Justin Trudeau. Let's take a look at some of the biggest controversies that rocked Trudeau's Prime Ministership. In a May 2016 incident dubbed Elbowgate, an impatient Trudeau crossed the floor in the House of Commons to grab a legislator, 
but accidentally elbowed a female parliamentarian in the breast. I noticed. He apologized repeatedly for the incident, saying he was only human and in a high-pressure job. Trudeau also promised there would be no repeat of his actions. Justin Trudeau first got into trouble with the Ethics Commissioner in December 2017, when it came out that he had broken conflict of interest rules by vacationing at the Aga Khan's private island in 2016. At the time, the Aga Khan Foundation was formally registered to lobby Trudeau and his officials. Justin Trudeau, who says one of his biggest priorities is helping Canada's marginalized and impoverished Aboriginal population, was forced to apologize in March 2019 for making a sarcastic remark to an indigenous woman who interrupted a Liberal Party fundraiser to protest about poor living conditions. Trudeau told her, thank you for your donation, as she was escorted from the room. In 2022, protests over Canada's restrictions on unvaccinated truckers intensified. The demonstrations began as a peaceful protest against the rules for unvaccinated or partially vaccinated cross-border truck drivers. But the rally later descended into violence, with protesters defacing monuments, displaying hate symbols and threatening locals. This convoy is all about freedom. It's not only with the truck drivers, it's actually for every single person. You, me, buddy down the road, it doesn't matter. Um, it's all about your free choice. It, that's what it should be. Like I said, if you're vaccinated, cool. You did it, well most people did it because of work, but you know, you should do it off of free will, off of your own choice. Also in 2022, Justin Trudeau found himself in a soup after his tweet falsely stated that the Iranian regime had sentenced 15,000 protesters to death. The inaccurate tweet was shared by Trudeau's official Twitter account and remained active for more than 12 hours before being deleted. In yet another incident in 2022, at the G20 summit in Bali, Chinese President Xi Jinping criticized Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in person over alleged leaks of their closed-door meeting. This was a rare public display of annoyance by the Chinese leader. In video footage, Xi and Trudeau can be seen standing close to each other and conversing via a translator at the summit on the Indonesian island. His displeasure was likely a reference to media reports that Trudeau brought up alleged espionage and Chinese interference in Canadian elections. A translator for Xi was heard in the video telling Trudeau that everything we discussed was leaked to the papers. That is not appropriate. Justin Trudeau's career has been mired in controversies ever since he took power in 2015. Currently, as tensions with India dial up higher and higher, Trudeau seems to be facing a reality check on the global stage. Even on the home front, things don't look any better. Canadians are struggling with inflation and high interest rates. Just in April this year, Canada faced a food crisis triggered by the rising cost of living.
Yes, it's very difficult. Even for the regular people with a decent income, when you go to the supermarket, the price has skyrocketed. So it's, it's, it's affecting everyone, but more so the people who are unemployed. We are absolutely in a food crisis in the, uh, in, in the country and certainly in the city of Toronto. Before the pandemic, we saw about 60,000 clients saying, I'm food insecure. And that number this past March is 270,000. It has escalated by four times and in a country as wonderful as Canada is, it just shouldn't be that way. On the 19th of April, a third of Canada's public servants set up pickets at hundreds of sites in the country demanding cost of living raises. More than 155,000 public servants went on strike. Canada last saw a strike of this size in 1991. The increases that they're offering us are offensive. They're, they're not keeping in line with even inflation. And this is the biggest employer in this country. So for them to treat us this way, we can't allow that. We know that we are out here fighting, not just for our own members, but for workers everywhere in Canada right now. Canada's economy too unexpectedly shed a net 6,400 jobs in July, and the joblessness rate ticked up to 5.5%. Is Trudeau addressing the issues that are plaguing his country? Well, the thing with Justin Trudeau is that all, while he wants to be able to blame everything that's happening on the country to sort of organic problems, inflation's not his problem, the housing crisis is not his problem, you know, unemployment, all this stuff is not his problem. It has really been a uh, it has really been a problem of liberal mismanagement, way too many regulations, way too many taxes. And the thing is that Justin Trudeau's only solution to every problem is to tax it harder and then call it racist and then declare it uh, a solved issue. The main the main things are would just be his overall incompetence when it comes to public policy. The Liberal government under Trudeau made a raft of promises in the 2015 elections. But it hasn't been able to live up to those assurances. Amidst the mounting pressures of international diplomacy and internal troubles of his own country, Trudeau's once dazzling smile now seems to be fading. Justin Trudeau's credibility is in serious crisis.